Suppose that a driving school claims that 95% of its clients pass their driver's test on the first try. We want to test this claim, so we establish a null hypothesis that 95% of the clients pass their driver's test on the first try versus an alternative hypothesis that less than 95% of the clients pass the driver's test on the first try. We then collect data on a number of students. In this data set, a 1 indicates that the student passed the driver's test on the first try. A 0 indicates that the student did not pass the driver's test on the first try. Out of these 44 students, 40 passed their test on the first try. So the proportion of passes on the first try is 90.9%. .9%. We can use this sample proportion to test our hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that 95% of the students pass the driver's test on the first try. This is what we assume to be true. We have a sample of 44 observations in which the proportion of students who pass on the first try is 90.9%. .9%. This is what we observe. We now need to calculate the standard error of our proportion. The standard error of a proportion is the square root of the proportion times 1 minus the proportion divided by the number of observations. Now, while we observed a proportion of 90.9%, .9%, this is a hypothesis test. And we begin a hypothesis test by assuming that something is true. What we assumed was true was that the proportion of students who pass the first time is 95%. So we take this 95%, what we're assuming to be true, and plug it into the standard error formula. So the standard error of our proportion is 0 0.033. We can now picture the distribution of all possible sample proportions drawn from 44 observations. We hypothesize that the population proportion is 95%. We observe a sample proportion of 90.9%. .9%. Our alternative hypothesis is that the population proportion is less than 95%. So we're concerned with the area to the left of what we observed. On the distribution, the area to the left of 90.9% .9 is 10.7%. This is our p-value. A p-value between 0 and 0 0.01 indicates very strong evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05 indicates strong evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10 indicates weak evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. And a p-value above 0 0.10 indicates no evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. Our p-value is 0 0.107. Therefore, we conclude that the sample does not provide evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. To calculate the p-value, we begin by constructing a test statistic. The test statistic is the value we observed, 0.909, minus the value we hypothesized, 0.95, divided by the standard error of the proportion, or 0 0.033. Our test statistic in this case is negative 1.242. If we have enough observations, we can take sample proportions to be normally distributed. So to find the p-value, we use the norm.dist function. The norm.dist function takes four arguments. The first is our test statistic, negative 1.242. The next three are 0, 1, and true. The norm.dist function returns the area to the left of the test statistic, in this case 10.7%.